sometimes I'm really slow to pick up a big novel, as in a one that's really long, because I know that sometimes I have work that picks up or a project to finish or whatever else, and I might not get to it for another week or two, and when I do, I forget what I've already read, and then it was just a wasted effort. But on some whim or another, I picked up this book by Lawrence Durrell. It's uh, Justine. It's actually, um, doesn't look very long, does it? It's a uh, 240 pages or so. But this is actually just the uh, first of four novels in this. Um, to call it a series is probably not quite right, but they're four grouped novels, and this is the first one. Altogether, uh, it's called the Alexandria Trilogy, by the way, uh, by Lawrence Durrell, and altogether they're about a thousand pages. Uh, this video, however, however, will just be a review of Justine, just the first uh, volume. It's really a spectacular book. Um, it reads like this sort of odd melange of, I don't know if you've read Paul Bowles' A Sheltering Sky, mixed with the strongly internal character development of writers like Virginia Woolf and Proust. Just as in A Sheltering Sky, the most important character isn't a person at all, but a place. Alexandria in Egypt. Uh, Alexandria, along with the haunting presence of its patron saint and poet Constantine Cavafy, uh, sort of run through the whole novel. The writing took some time for me to get used to because it's really experimental and it's really lyrical and there are time jumps quite a bit through the novel. Um, at first the the style seems sort of histrionic and overly wrought and I'll go into that a bit in a second. Uh, like something embarrassing out of a soap opera but uh, much like the city itself it eventually starts to grow on you through the novel and sometime during the second half of the book. It did take me about a hundred pages to get used to the style, but you you come to see, at least I did, uh, the prose as not just lurid purple prose, but almost as epiphanic, as just wonderful. Something to get used to, but once you're there, it's really beautiful. There's an epigram uh, from Freud in the beginning of the novel that says, I am accustoming, accustoming myself to the idea of regarding every sexual act as a process in which four persons are involved. We shall have a lot to discuss about that. And this, in a word, really sums up what the novel is about. Uh, the narrator, who remains unnamed throughout the novel, he is named in uh, the subsequent books, uh, befriends a tubercular Alexandrian prostitute named Melissa, but soon begins an affair with a woman named Justine, who's already married to a wealthy Coptic Christian named Nassim. Uh, the attempt to hide the affair and Nassim's growing suspicion and jealousy are really what sort of drive the novel, and it wasn't by accident earlier that I used the words soap opera, above because it's uh, I mean you don't really get any lurid details about sex there's nothing graphic in it at all but it is all about how love and passion and jealousy operate in this sort of quartet the Alexandria quartet uh, Durrell seems to to want Alexandria to be as obscurantist and full of the other as possible. He really does try to make it um, not like a real city, but some sort of uh, something steeped in mystery and intrigue. Uh, he puts several of the main characters in a, a philosophical and religious cabal, uh, but at the end of the book, its influence and importance hasn't yet been revealed. I'm hoping they will be in the, in the next three books. 
what makes this novel really spectacular is the language. Uh, like I said, the episodic jumps in time, uh, the lush lyricism, there's so much beauty in the language, and how Durrell really deftly ties all of this together to both the city and the themes that drive the book, <clears throat> passion, love, and jealousy. I want to leave you with just a few lines from the last page of the book, uh, just to entice you to read this, and you should read it. It's amazing. The cicadas are throbbing in the great plains, and the summer Mediterranean lies before me in all its magnetic blueness. Somewhere out there, beyond the mauve throbbing line of horizon, lies Africa, lies Alexandria, maintaining its tenuous grasp on one's affections through memories which are already refunding themselves, slowly through forgetfulness, memory of friends, of incidents long past. The slow unreality of time begins to grip them, blurring the outlines, so that sometimes I wonder whether these pages record the actions of real human beings, or whether this is not simply the story of a few inanimate objects which precipitated drama around them. I mean a black pitch, a watch key, and a couple of dispossessed wedding rings. I love that writing. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Okay. If any of that sounds interesting, it is... By the way, these novels, are, especially Justine, is sort of standalone. He doesn't call the next novels sequels, he calls them siblings. So, ideally, they could be read all together, but they sort of stand on their own, as they say. A superb book. A beautiful book. Lawrence Durrell's Justine. The first volume of the Alexandria Quartet.